I will increase my speed by 1.5 so that we we are still at 5:30. Because I have heard in YouTube, <clears throat> you listen 1.5 to so this lecture will be at speed of 1.5. Okay, so uh, what I'll try to do in this lecture is that I'll try to wrap up uh, whatever we started for doing for parameterized algorithms. I'll try to wrap up whatever we try to do for approximation algorithm and give you some link which just connects all this in one lecture. Okay, So that's the goal of coverage, approximation, and FPT. So coverage is a problem, approximation is a paradigm, and FPT is a paradigm. And we'll combine all of them together in this lecture. OK, so what is maximum coverage? And second disclaimer is that um, this is the first time I'm making slides in PPT. So something happened, and many of my slides have been saved as picture. And they have become uneditable. I have no clue why. The slides which I made, they say this is some compatibility issue or something, something. I have no clue. So suddenly, a lot of text will come. So bear with it. But not all. There are some only half the slides are like that. OK, so <clears throat> we have universe U of n elements and m subsets and any teaser k. And uh, the maximum coverage problem is find k sets such that uh, you know its union is as large as possible. OK, so this is a very basic fundamental problem useful in almost everything, like from game theory to social choice to everything. You want to cover k sets so that the union is as much as possible. OK, and uh, what is set cover problem is basically find the minimum number of sets that covers all the elements, right? So the difference between maximum coverage is that in maximum coverage, I had told you that I'm not interested in covering all the elements, but I have given you a budget of k sets. From these k sets, you try to maximize how many elements you can cover. In the set cover, I have not given you a budget of k, but your goal is to cover all the elements, and you try to use as few sets as possible. This is the okay. So we will largely focus on maximum coverage and its variants, maybe a little bit in this talk. So here's the basic greedy coverage. So what will a greedy, greedy coverage algorithm? If you had to think of a greedy algorithm, what would you think of for this covering problem? OK, so largest set. But that's right. So every time what he's trying to say, among all the sets, pick the sets that cover maximum number of uncovered elements. That's a very basic greedy algorithm or basic greedy steps. And that is what is written. So you pick the set that covers the maximum number of uncovered elements, mark elements, in, and you go ahead until you are done. Okay. So this is my greedy algorithm, which I'm sure I think Fahad would have shown you and its analysis. Has he? Huh? He did. Okay. So if you take this algorithm and stop after the first top first k step. So I did. So if you're looking for a maximum k coverage, I say I will just say repeat this algorithm, but not for till you have covered every element, but just stop at the first k rounds. And that's an approximation for that's all approx that's an approximation algorithm for maximum coverage because you had to pick k sets, you have picked k sets and you have covered some set of elements. Okay. And and this is gives you a factor one minus one by E. Okay. So if the best k sets could cover opt number of elements, then this step will cover you 1 minus 1 by e, which is like so roughly 0.62 or something approximation. Okay, And if you run until all elements are covered, that is set covered, and that has ln n factor approximation algorithm. Okay, So have you seen any of these two in the analysis? Yes, no? So OK, fine. I'm not going to do analysis for this thing. So actually, what you prove is the following. So the lemma which we prove, if the best cases cover t elements, then the greedy covers 1 minus 1 by e times t element in first k rounds. OK, so there's one bracket missing. OK, so let me put it. Advantage of OK, so there should have been another thing, this thing. So 1 minus 1 by e, 4. OK, so basically, if you apply this lemma, so 
the first case set for set cover what you prove is and this is what i wanted to emphasize on so first put k set k as opt like opt number of sets if you apply this same algorithm with you run it for opt round what will it cover it will cover 1 minus 1 by e of opt and if opt covers all the elements it this if i run this algorithm for opt round it is going to cover how much 1 minus 1 by e of m number of elements okay so if the op set covers t elements right covers for us now m elements then the greedy covers 1 minus 1 by e times m elements in first opt rounds right so basically what happens so basically when you prove greedy you say hey if the set cover size is opt let us run this greedy algorithm for first opt round how many elements did it cover it covered some fraction of total number of elements right so if i run this algorithm first opt round i cover some fraction of element if i cover the second round for the remaining i have covered a fraction so on and so forth how many number of times we have to run this opt number of rounds is opt times ln n okay so this is why is that this is why greedy algorithms covers like greedy set cover takes ln n because what you are able to show actually is if you run this greedy algorithm for opt number of rounds then it covers a fraction of the total number of elements is that fine right so this is something which you should remember from this analysis which i am not doing is that this is why it works right so when you just see ln n it becomes a bit more complicated but the best way is to see is that here is my greedy algorithm if i run x number of steps and if x is the num is opt where opt is the number of sets in a best set cover then it this greedy is going to cover in that many sets a fraction of total number of elements and hence each step if i do so why do i say in this way because this will allow you to construct several log factor log approximation for various set of problems because you do greedy and you say hey if if you can for example uh for vertex cover what was the simple greedy algorithm pick a vertex of highest degree right pick a vertex of highest degree it's the same algorithm right so if the minimum vertex cover size it say opt so after opt number of rounds how many edges will be covered fraction of m so if i run second opt fraction of fraction so this is why this is a log n approximation okay so for example for any problem if we can say hey it's all about covering something polynomial in n number of objects then this greedy is going to give log of that factor in approximation okay uh, for example it's not very obvious but you can design an algorithm for deleting vertices to get most kind of subgraph induced subgraph you can think of like feedback vertex like icyclic forest and this and that using this approximation using this algorithm but what to optimize is not clear okay okay but that is for some other day okay so okay so i want to do not want i do not want to do that approximation algorithm but i wanted to do a slight different generalization of this problem for the lecture and uh, what we is call as maximum colorful coverage problem the reason why i am telling you a different algorithm just to show you a different paradigm approximation algorithm paradigm that is very very useful in practice as well as in so now each set also has a colors okay and i'm saying look i am not interested in any solution but give me k sets one from each right that maximizes this so i'm looking for a colorful solution right so if you put all the sets at same color right and put that it's fine to pick from here then that's perfectly fine to get a normal set but here every set has some color and you are looking that hey among all the solutions i'm looking for a solution which picks one set from each color is that fine is the question clear okay of different color so that its union is as large as possible so the question remains the same it's just that now we have colors on the sets and from each color class i'm only allowed to pick one set okay so here's a very simple approximation algorithm for this 
here it is so this is what is called local search okay this is called local search what is a local solution is that i start arbitrarily one sets from each color class and say i say hey can i delete one set and add one set and improve the number of elements that i cover right so i'm saying i have some solution currently can i improve this solution and how what is a step to improve i can delete a set of particular color and add a set of particular color if that happens just do it right and it will eventually it will stop because every step you are increasing the number of elements that you are covering right so this this local it cannot run forever right it will just stop at some point of time particularly when you would have probably covered all the elements right or you are not able or you or you have found a solution which is locally optimal means adding any set of any color deleting of that color and adding set a set of that color does not increase the number of elements that we have covered is that fine so this is what is called local search right no 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 it's just k exactly no that's just input that's an input that's input is some m some colors on sets right that's just the input right and but it, we initialize by some s1 to sk arbitrarily picking one set from each color class right and we use value of s to denote union of all those and sc to denote set of color c in s so now i'm saying that if there exists some color in c which i can delete and add that and the value increases strictly then just do the replacement so this is basically local search or we are trying to greedily see that by deleting one set and adding one set can i improve my solution okay so this is called local search and which is very very common strategy to design approximation algorithm right so basically i'm going to show that our local solution is not too far away from the global optimum solution is that okay is the approx is the algorithm clear to all of you forget about analysis and this so algorithm starts with an arbitrary solution so for example you start so for example there's a very simple approximation algorithm for max cut you know what is max cut you want to partition your vertex set so that the number of edges that are going across is maximized so i could start with an arbitrary arbitrary partition of vertex set and say hey can i exchange a vertex from here to there like a pair exchange or maybe one guy such that the number of edges going across increase so that's an example of a local search right so we are locally trying to find an optimum solution by an exchange of a vertex so similarly here in this case we have started with k sets and we are just trying to do this is that fine okay okay so what do you think will be an approximation factor for this algorithm if best covers say t elements what do you think this local local will cover generally this local search algorithm will have half so it is not as good as that point 6 something which we did but this will have half and let's try to understand why okay so let this is the slide which just came because it's like a picture okay so let's s1 to sk is a solution returned by the algorithm okay and what is o1 to ok is an optimum solution right so suppose so think of this that this is an a set of elements that are covered by our solution and and there will be some set of elements that are covered by optimum solution there will be some intersection like this this is o optimum and approximation okay and so now i'm trying to understand that look at this portion these are the portion o minus a that optimal covers but our algorithm does not cover if you look at the picture right so these are the set of elements that our algorithm cover uh, sorry optimum covers and we don't cover so if i can show to this that hey the set of elements that you are not covering is not too much right right if that is not too much compared to 
what we are covering, then we will be in a happy space. Okay, and that is what we are trying to do. Okay. Okay, and what? So now we have this O one two, O one two, OK sets, and I say, what is the intersection of O one two? And this is what I call this portion is called X. X is O minus A, right? So you, this is the portion which is X. And now I'm asking, what is an interest for each set O I? For each set O I, I say, you O I is going to cover everything. What elements does O I covers in this, right? O I may cover some elements. O I may cover zero elements. Let the set of elements that it covers, I'm going to denote by D I. Now, okay, and now I'm saying this cardinality of X is summation of D1 to DK. Why? Because look at this, some element in AI must be covering this, right? Some element in OI must be covering this. But it's possible that same element is covered by five sets, right? But when I'm counting this DI, I'm saying, hey, the same element, if it is covered by three sets, it is covered in D1, it is covered in some D5, it is covered in D7. So definitely, cardinality of X is less than or equal to D1 plus D2 plus DK. Is that fine? And it is also possible that some D1 could be zero, because maybe some OI doesn't even intersect this part. OI is only that side, right? So these DIs are greater than or equal to zero. But since every element is covered by some OI, right? This implies that this X, the people who are not covered by my algorithm is upper bounded by this summation DIs. Is that fine? Okay. <clears throat> yes. Can't A be a proper subset of O? Think, why not? A could be equal to O. O, o what do you say? Oh, A could be a proper subset of O. It could be. But still, O minus A can be O minus A will be non-empty, no? That's fine, right? I'm not talking about, I'm just looking at the set O minus A. Let's delete the elements of A that are that are not present in O. So even if you had, <clears throat> you are saying, look at O and look at A here, fully content. Am I right? But still, there are so many elements left here, no? Is that fine? I have never said that O is A is a super. I just said A and O intersect. Look, A is a black set, O is a green set. Why A cannot be fully outside O? It can be. Did I ever say that they are not? No, no, wait. What is your question? I still don't understand. Of course, 100%. Then what will be O minus A? X, which is O minus A, will be just O itself. That's OK. Of course. Why can't? You took your algorithm. That covered something else. My optimum covered something else. I mean, I don't go. Of course, they can be disjoint. But irrespective of that, this will hold. Because what I'm saying, look at this O. Someone of the some sets in O covers those elements. So it could be O1, it could be O2, it could be O3. So what is DI? Is OI intersection X, right? But it's possible that same element is covered by O1, O5, O7. So this element is contributing to the intersection in first set, third set, seventh set. So this number is more than cardinality of X. That's all that I'm saying. Nothing more. I'm not using anything else. Again, a picture. OK. okay. <clears throat> now I'm trying to compare. So now I want to compensate. I want to relate these DIs. And I want to come up with, because I have some local, locally optimum, right? So I want to ask, why did my local search solution did not put OI, some, some OI, and it decided to pick something else? Why? So because we have done something locally optimum. So now we have to relate 
what does this local optimum imply to these OIs? How are they related to each other? And to do that, here's a small magical step. So I have NI. What is NI? Number of elements in SI that are uniquely covered by SI. Okay. So there will be some element, some element in a in what you call in SI that is covered by SI, but there is no other SJ that covers it. Like I am the one who are uniquely responsible for these elements. You understand the point? Right? So what is SI? These are the elements which are in, in solution A. Okay? So think of this way. Here is your A. Right? It is union of SIs. But there could be, there could be some element here which is present only in S1. It is not present in anybody else, right? So I, by Ni, I denote those elements that are present in S1, but not in any other sets. By N2, those elements of S2 that are present in S2, but not in S1, not in S3. Not, it's like these are the elements which are un, SI is a unique responsibility for coverage of these elements. Now, this is why I have a lower bound, right? So cardinality of A is definitely greater than or equal to this, because N1 is uniquely covered by S1. N2 number of elements are uniquely covered by S2. NK elements are uniquely covered by SK. So cardinality of A, right? So what is cardinality of A? You're counting these elements how many times? Exactly one time, right? These elements, exactly one time. This is, so this provides a lower bound on the set of A, right? And when and when we were talking about upper bound, we didn't care how many times you cover. Right? So when you are talking about upper bound, you don't care. So you can say, hey, whatever may be the intersection, let's sum them up, this is upper bounded. But I need a lower bound because I want to relate this upper bound and this lower bound in some sense. Right? So how do I say? Okay, here are some elements that are uniquely covered by my set S1. These are the elements which are uniquely covered by S2. Then definitely side of A is uniquely covering by A1 plus uniquely covering by A2 plus uniquely covering by S3, so on and so forth. So this is the lower bound that comes. Is that fine here? Okay, so we have two inequality. So we consider the set, this set, we look at intersection and we said this is upper bounded by some quantity. Next. Now just try to understand. You know that my curly S, S is a solution returned by the algorithm, by approximation algorithm. Now you ask yourself, what happens in S, I put O1 and delete S1. What happens? Right? So now you consider a new set S prime from the, op, from the local optimum, I say, what happens if I delete set SI and I add OI? Where imagine that I have paired SI of color this, OI of this color. What happens? Why could you not do this? Why could you not do this? So if you notice, what will the value of this? Value of this will be number of elements that it covers minus NI. Because when I delete SI, these are the elements which are uniquely covered by SI. The rest of the elements are covered by someone else. So you will not decrease those. And now you have added DI. Why DI is fine? Why DI is fine? Because these are the elements that do not appear in A. Right? So when I add SI, the intersection from outside will be added to it. Right? Is that fine? Right? So look, this is X, which is outside A. So now look at SI, some, some other set OI that if I add, how many new elements will it add? It will only add new elements that are here. Definitely. Okay. So this is what I'm saying. What is the value of S? Total number of elements that are covered by old S. I deleted SI. So I lost my NI because I was responsible. And I added OI. Then when I add OI, how many new elements did I add? I added new elements which was outside A. And what a number was that? That was DI. Okay, but you, now you can say, what about, but look, this Ni also that you deleted, 
is somewhere here. Because when you delete SI, you lose some elements from here, nothing from here. And when you add SI, you add something from here. So you delete some, something here, you add something here. OK. But what is the value of S prime? Value of S prime is less than or equal to value of S. Otherwise, you would have done this movement, no? What, what? Come again? Yes. No, no, no. I'm talking about my solutions. S1 to SK. S1 to SK is a solution returned by the algorithm. What NI part? NI. Yeah, why it cannot be here? It could be here. Yeah, but I don't care anyway. OK. Uh, you are saying? So look, OK, maybe I should not be. I'm saying value of s is at least this much. Is this fine? Value of s, you're right. Maybe I should, value of s is at least this much. This is fine. OK, you're right. But we know that value of s prime is less than or equal to value of s. No, whatever it is. But now, all I'm saying is greater than or equal to. This is fine. All right? But value of s prime is at least this much. But you did not make this move, no? Because a local search algorithm. It means the value of s, the current solution value, was not increasing by doing this movement. Right? So this inequality anyway holds. What is the meaning of this? That ni must be greater than or equal to di. Because ni must be greater than or equal to di, otherwise this inequality cannot hold. Yes. Yes. Uh, otherwise, I, because I'm only allowed to make those changes, no? So why did I not make si y swap there? So I have just paired them up, s1, o1, s2, o2, for the same colors. OK? So is this fine? OK, so now we are done. Because what is the cardinality of A? Is at least n1 to nk, right? Now, each n1 is at least d1 to dk because of this local search idea. And what is d1 to dk is at least cardinality of x. What is cardinality of x? Is greater than or equal to cardinality of O minus A. So what is A is at least O divided by 2, right? So if I have at least my approximation solution at least covers half the elements compared to the optimum solution. Okay, So there's just one idea. And this idea of taking these two separate sets is what works in most cases. But sometimes with a different constant that you will get it. But largely, an overall scheme of doing with them. What optimum did not cover and what I covered? And what can I do from outside to go inside and local search, local algorithm did not do this. That will give you an inequality on the things which you could gain and which you could lose. OK? And that's it. Right? So what is this? I added some colored set, and I did not add that optimum set. Right? So I'm saying I added something, and when I remove him and add my optimum, my value decreases. So that gives you a what you call opposite inequality, which you can exploit for your bound. OK? So that tells us. When I remove him, I lose something. When I add this, I gain something. And since overall I did not gain, it means my loss was more than my gain. So this word, loss is more than my gain. That's it. So the local search tells us that when I do a movement, I lose something. And when I put the corresponding optimum, I gain something. But overall, I'm not gaining anything. It means this loss is more than the gain. So this is the one line idea of most local search algorithm. Right? So sometimes people do one step local search. Sometimes I could have tried two sets at a time or four sets at a time, and they lead to different things. But this simple approximation of them gives us a factor half approximation. Is that fine? Any question? Before we change the track. Yes. 
or this I don't know for this particular problem. But if we had no colors, then we know that it is maximum coverage, right? And that has one minus one by E. Yes. So and this is just gives us half. So at least for one color, like not no, if you had uncolored version, then this problem will be. Yeah. So no, this. Uh, okay. I don't know whether for colored version this is tight or not. I, at least I don't know. Maybe yes. No, I'm saying that I don't know whether this like whether for this particular colorful problem is half an optimum or not. This I don't know. Like. It's polynomial time. How many times? Each time you will at least increase one new element, no? What? Yeah, number of element is like universe size. Universe is part of my input. I mean, the input is you have given some universe and some sets, and you're trying to do this. So you know that this particular step of improvement steps will not happen more than size of universe because every time the number of elements that you're able to cover increases strictly by one otherwise I don't perform the movement once I have reached this local optima local equilibrium that nothing improves I say take your solution and we are done yes I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, at least I'm not aware of. I don't think it should. Those things are like immaterial. Yes. Yeah. So what I mean by that, imagine that rather than taking one set at a time, you say, hey, let's pick up two sets of two different colors and try to put it. If you can't. like, So this is like a two set local search. I could do three set local search. I could do four search. Four, for example, if I do k k step local search, what will happen? I will get the optimum solution. So, number of sets in a move you are allowed to change could lead to a better and better improved approximation of them. And it does. It does. Provably, it does. Not for all problems. For many problems. Okay. Is that fine? But you see, more and more sets you try to do, more and more running time it will have. Right? Because now you have to try say 10 sets. So like n to the power 10. So they theoretically they might improve, but practically their performance will just decrease. Like beyond n log n, most algorithms don't work. N square is just bad. Okay? So it does improve performance by for many problems, but running time becomes prohibitively uh, more and more. Okay? Is that fine? Because it has become a picture. Okay. So this is what we know about this maximum coverage problem. Okay. So what we know, unless P equal to NP, you cannot do better than this 1 minus 1 minus C. So it's like you cannot do better than 1 minus E minus 0 point this approximation unless P equal to NP. Do you understand? So this is the best we can hope for unless P equal to NP. And for, uh, for set cover, ln n is a known approximation algorithm. You cannot do 1 minus little o of 1 times ln n unless some other conjecture fails. So in terms of, in terms of in what we can do in polynomial time, these greedy algorithms are the best we can hope for Okay, in general setting. Like when we do not know anything about the universe, we do not know anything about sets, all we know that we are given some arbitrary universe and arbitrary family of sets. These greedy algorithms are the best we can hope for. Okay, what do we know about hardness in fixed parameter tractability about these problems? 
So here it is. What? So what we know that unless FPT equal to W1, so I can't solve this problem exactly. Like I cannot find you the best k sets in running time f of k poly n. Not possible. Okay. Similarly, for set cover, I can't find you k sets that covers whole of the universe in these kind of running time. So this is impossible. So these problems are not only hard in the polynomial time world, but they are also hard solving exactly in the world of parametrized algorithms or the world where we allow certain amount of super exponential time in the number of sets that we are allowed to pick for our solution. OK? I th uh, lock in did dominating set. Okay, so the good exercise is give a reduction from DOM set to set cover. FPT reduction for set cover. This is like obvious. Yes. OK. You can ask her. What's your name? Huh? Huh. You can ask Mohanabi. OK. Now, what is FPT approximation means? OK. So let me introduce what I mean by FPT approximation, right? So we know that these problems are very hard, both in the world of polynomial time to approximate. We can't solve them exactly in FPT time. So can we combine these two methods, combine these two worlds, and say something interesting about it? Okay. So here is for maximum coverage problem. Find k sets so that its union is t. So what I mean by approximation algorithm. So rather than defining in general, what I mean, I will, so you give me an approximation. We say that it has some alpha less than or equal to one factor approximation. If in this much time I can say, hey, there are no k sets that covers t elements. Or I can give you k sets that covers at least alpha times t elements. Is that fine? So I'm still not covering all the elements which you wanted me to cover, but I still cover the fraction of approximation. Like if Alpha is less than, so you fix alpha equal to 0.9, right? For example, you fix alpha equal to 0.9, then I will say, hey, in this much amount of time, or which is running time depends on k, and the approximation guarantee that you want, I can either say, no, 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 there are no k sets that can cover t sets, so that's great, or I don't know what it is, but here is your some k sets that covers at least 0.9 t number of edges. OK, so is the goal clear? Right? So this now is like a k coverage. So I'm saying k is my hard. The number of sets that you're allowed to pick, it's fixed k, and you optimize over t. How many number of elements that you can cover? Or there is another way people study some of these problems, hopefully. OK, or I can say either this is a no instance, or I will, my god. OK, so I think OK, or OK, OK, or uh, this should be alpha greater than or equal to 1, OK, 1. Or I can tell you that, fine, it's a no instance. Or I will give you some 2k sets that covers all the covers t elements, right? So either I can approximate t, I say, I allow you to cover less number of elements, or I can say, no, 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 I want to cover my t sets, but I allow you to take more sets if you want, right? So I allow you to take 2k sets or 1.5k sets to cover. So there are two ways people can approximate this problem. One, where you are trying on how many sets you are allowed to pick, or you can approximate how many objects you are covering, how many elements you are covering. So there are two perspectives of approximation, and both perspectives have its own meaning. OK? And what do we know about hardness of this problem? So here's a constraint who says that unless sun will die in, say, some 10 years, you cannot hope to do an approximation running in of 1 minus, there is no 1 minus 1 by E C approximation for maximum coverage running in time f of kc into the power. So in, I cannot in FP, like, I cannot give you an FPT approximation, which will find you k sets, OK, k sets, and that covers, let's say, 0.99 t number of edges. 
So whatever you could do in poly time with respect to approximation, that is the best you can do with respect to approximation, even when I give you power of exponential time. Okay. And what is this unless sun dies in 10 years is some conjecture which I don't want to throw on your face. So basically it means that we cannot do any approximation also for this problem in FPT time for the general setting of objects. Okay. So now just to this was just even if you don't understand these two slides, it's perfectly fine. It was just to give you a flavor that I took approximation, I took hardness, I tried to use different paradigms, still we failed. What else can be achieved? So let me see. I'm going to do a case study of partial vertex cover. So what is a partial vertex cover? Input is a graph G, integers K and T. Does there is K vertices that covers at least T edges? So this is like a coverage problem, but on a graph. Okay, just for us to do design something interesting. And if I put T equal to number of edges, what is this problem? Vertex cover, right? So if I put T equal to number of edges, this is classical vertex cover. But now I'm saying, no, no, no. Hedge my key is a hard constraint. Try to cover as many edges possible with key, right? What do you think you can do in polynomial time for this problem? No, you know factor two approximation for vertex cover, right? He's saying greedy. It's okay. He will try to cover more number. We will come to that in a minute. But what we know in polynomial time that for the classical vertex cover, we can do factor two approximation. But factor two in what sense? It says. It's respect to the solution size. You say, look, if there is a opt or there is a k size vertex cover, then I will produce you two k size vertex cover for the vertex cover problem. Partial vertex cover is even more harder problem. So hoping well time we can get two minus epsilon approximation is useless. Okay, so that is one way of looking. But if I look at from the coverage perspective, I'm saying, oh. If now I fix you, you're not allowed to change K, but you're allowed to cover less number of edges, right? For that problem in polynomial time, there's a point nine, okay, point nine three approximation, which you give him a graph G, it will give you if K vertices can cover T edges, it will give you K vertices that will cover roughly point nine three times T edges, and you cannot do better than this unless P equal to NP. Okay, so it's not that you will give me 0 0.9999 and I will give you 0 0.9990 T approximation. No, that's not happening in the polynomial time wall, even for the vertex cover. Okay. 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 So in polynomial time, we cannot find k vertices that cover at least say dt edges d equal to 0 0.9 and P equal to NP, and for any A greater than equal to zero in polynomial time, we cannot find two minus A K size vertices that cover T edges. That is unique game conjecture, right? So in polynomial time, this is what we know how hard it is. Is that fine? So in polynomial time, I mean, all I'm saying to you that you cannot get arbitrarily close to T. Okay. So now we will try to combine. What about this in FPT world? Well, Locke showed to you that partial vertex cover is W1 hard parameterized by K. So there is no F of K poly N algorithm for these problems. So in FPT time, I can't give you K vertices that covers T edges. Or, okay, so we cannot do these things. You understood the question? You understood the realm in which we are talking about? So even for these problems, I can't solve them exactly in FPT time, even on graphs. So if I give you a graph G and say, hey, can you give me K vertices that covers at least T edges? What Locke said that this is not possible in FPT time. Right? But now we can try to ask, what can we do in terms of approximation? Right? And then we get two interesting answers for these questions, which I will tell you. So what are the results? They are very OK. So you give me a B. You give me a B, so it's your approximation ratio. You can choose 0 0.9999 or some epsilon. You can choose your epsilon, whatever you give. I'm going to take a running time. I'm going to return you a 
either say that, look, f of epsilon times k, I'm going to say, hey, there are no k sets that covers t edges, or I will give you k sets that covers 1 minus epsilon times t. So like, as close to t as you want, I will let you go, but you have to pay for that in the running time. So in that sense, in polynomial time, I can't do such algorithm. But now, having the gain of FPT allows me to go arbitrarily close to the number of edges that I can cover, but I pay the price. Of course, I pay the price because I can't do this. I can't get closure to the optimum without paying some price. So closure to opt you will get, more and more penalty you will pay. But if you are happy with 0.9999t, then you, it will not look like it's like constant. That's one thing. But other question we could ask is that, fine, I, I want you to cover me t edges, but you, can, you are allowed to pick more than k vertices, just like a normal vertex cover. What can we say? So this is something which we answered recently. And the answer is quite cute, is that in FPT time, either I will tell you, there are no k vertices that covers at least t edges, or I will give you just k plus 1 vertex that will cover at least t edges. So this is the as best as you can hope for, because this is an additive one approximation for the problem. right? So I'm saying, either I will, give, either I will tell you there are no k vertices that covers at least t edges, or I said, I don't know whether it's k or not, but here your k plus 1 vertex that covers your t edges. Okay? So now you see, so now combining these methods start to give you some interesting and different answers. Okay? So my whole goal is to not, I have some 15 to 20 minutes more. I will try to not outline. I'll try. I'll give you full, complete proof of first theorem, okay? And second theorem, if you have interest, you come. I can still give you full, complete proof, not the optimal running time, but like some algorithm, okay? So do we understand the question at least? Okay. So what is the status given? So this is what I'm going to show to you. So you're given a graph G. You're given a vertex K, budget K, and T edges. And I'm going to show it to you that look. I'm going to give an, and you have given me a parameter b, and I have to cover at least bt edges. Okay, so I'm either going to say, hey, look, there is no way I can cover with k vertices t edges, or I will output you k vertices that will do this job for me. Is that fine? Goal clear to everybody? Okay. Now you were saying something. So, what do you think is the best set of k vertices that we should try to hit our aim on? You said, right? If now I want to find k vertices that covers at least t edges, where to look for? Huh? Max degree. Excellent. If all of you agree this is max degree? Like, we should look, or rather, we should look at high degree vertices. Right? OK, so let's look at high degree vertices. And that's it. We are done. OK? All we need to do is to make sure that they work. OK. So here are some simple observations. So here's my greedy algorithm. I sort the vertices with respect to degree. So V1 is the largest degree, V2 is the second largest, V3 is the second largest, so on and so forth. I have sorted them. And now I ask motion, uh, look, no k vertex can cover summation of degree top k degree. No vertex. Right? So if T is if someone is asking me, hey, with k vertex, can you cover more than summation top k summation of degrees of top k guys? What can I say? Nah, go away. So that's the first observation. But if I return top k vertices, how bad I am from the optimum? Why ask yourself a question? Why the top k vertices is not good solution? Why top k vertices are not good? Yes. Yes. So her point is, the reason why they are not, because maybe the solutions are like, there is no edge among them, and that's why they are covering. But now there's an edge, you're counting from him, you're counting from him. So this is the just this small overcounting that is not making our top K guys as our solution. That's great. So now we understand, right? So we ask ourselves question, why these top K guys are not our solution? We say, hey, the reason is, that these k square guys maybe are not counted by those guys because those are independent set. But these top k guys, but then how much they are off by? They are off by k square. 
these guys will definitely cover at least top minus k square. You understand the question? Understand the point? No. So what I want to say that t is at least this much. t better be at least this much. Why? Because if t is less than top degree minus k square, then look at the top k guys. No, how much? How many edges they are covering? They are definitely covering the kind of degrees and minus k square, the edges which are in between them, right? So if you draw a picture, here's your top guys. Here's your top guys. Right? And here are some edges here. Right? So top guys are covering how much? These top guys are definitely covering all the edges uniquely, which are here. Right? So I sum their degrees and I delete how many? I delete the edges which are here. How many of them are there? At most k choose 2, which is less than k square. So I, see. so I say, if the number of edges that you wanted to cover was less than total degree minus k square, then what is my answer? Return the top k guys. Am I good? So I look at the top k guys. If t is too large than top k guys degree, then I say nah. If t is slightly less than the top k guys summation degree, then also we are good. So there are two extremes that we are able to handle. The only reason we are not able to handle is because t is between this. So I know that t is less than this number, t is at least this, otherwise we are good. So now we only need to handle the case when t is between these two extremes. Now I ask myself, OK. But now I want to say, OK, fine. These guys are covering at least how many? Top k guys. I say, fine. But now let's see. We are allowed to lose some fraction. no? We are allowed to lose some fraction. I say, in which case, still my top guys are my good solution. So I say, look, this is my summation degree. Summation of degree is at least t, right? Is that fine? Summation of degree is at least t because it is here. So I replace, right, by k squared. And if I can show that t minus k squared is strictly greater than bt, we are happy. If the number of edges covered by top k guys is more than whatever I wanted, like is, is it like 1 minus epsilon times t, then you're good, no? Then just return. And this I can do in polynomial time because all I'm doing is counting, right? I'm just summing up, doing counting and this. Now let me ask, when is this top guys are not my solution? So they are not my solution because, let's look. So when this happens, when this inequality happens, when t minus k squared divided by t, which is, uh, which is like 1 minus k squared by t is more than b. Is that fine? So when will this happen? So I have told, so you divide by t here, you will get 1 minus k squared by t should be greater than or equal to b. What? No, this is exactly what it is. Is that fine? Now I say, suppose t is some xk square. If t is at least xk square, then you replace t equal to xk square. You need to show that 1 minus 1 by x is at least b. OK. Or when x is at least 1 minus 1 by b. So if the, if the budget t is more than 1 by 1 minus b times k square, then top guy. Why it is? Imagine that you had to cover t power t power t number of edges. Sorry, k power k power k number of edges. And k square is minuscule in front of that, no? Imagine that number of edges that you needed to cover were like k to the power 100. Then this k square edges compared to k to the power 100 is minuscule, right? So if I lose this, what am I losing? Nothing. But the only time when the set of edges inside starts to matter, if they become good fraction of total number of edges I need to cover, it. think about it. So I'm saying, if the t is like ocean, and this is like a bucket, then does it matter that you from ocean you take out a bucket? No. But when it starts to matter, when you have a you know small place, and then bucket starts to matter if all water I have is some ten buckets, then you will see the difference, right? So that's exactly what is happening, right? If the number of edges was like ocean, if I delete some little bit. I'm not going to lose. But if that is like your pond, 
then it will start to matter. Right? So this is exactly the cases we handle. So th this is what I call this bucket trick. Okay? So this is what I call, I actually call it OSN versus bucket trick. Okay? So if the number of objects are like OSN, then deleting a bucket still keeps it OSN. So this is fine. So the only time when the number of edges that are going in the top vertices becomes relevant because when they are good fraction of the total number of objects that I need to cover. Otherwise, they are always bad. You understand the point? So if you do a simple arithmetic, right? So if say t was like k to the power 100, top k guys are covering how much? Say, for now I want k equal to 100, you are at least covering k this much. This much. So this is like, if you divide by k to the power 100, it is 1 by k squared by uh, k to the power 100, it is 1 by 1 by k to the power 90. It's minuscule, right? So, I mean, it's very minuscule fraction. Who cares? Only time we start to care if it is not k power, if t is not like k power 100, but maybe t is like 2.1, then k square matters, right? So when the objects we need to cover is also the objects we are losing, then you better be careful, OK? And that's all that this slides is trying to do. OK, so, so the top k vertices do not work when the number of edges that we need to cover is like some dk square, like some order k square number of edges we need to cover, where d is some constant, depending on your set epsilon or b, whatever you want to do. OK. But in this case, we can solve the problem optimally, and we are done. If the total number of edges that we need to cover is not too large, it's just some function of the size, then we know how to do the problem optimally. And then, okay. So what does this problem reduce to? This problem reduces to if I had an algorithm with running time, say, some f of t, then we are happy, right? Because then I can do f of t is like dk square, t times dk square into the power big of 1, and then I'm done. So the problem that we need to solve is the following. Again, back to the same old problem. A graph j, integers k, and t. That this is k what you say that covers at least t edges. But now, k is not my parameter. I want to design an algorithm where the running time depends on the number of objects or the number of edges that I need to cover. That is t. Right? Because then we are done. So because the only case my top k what you say did not work was when the number of edges that I needed to cover was some poly function of my vertices. Okay. And this is very easy to solve, I'll tell you. Getting to the heart of the algorithm. If there's a vertex of degree t, are you done? Just delete, output that vertex, no? You're done. So every vertex has degree how much? At most t. And maybe k, number of vertices that you're allowed to cover, is too much compared to t. Then also you are done. Why? Find a maximal matching M. Okay. Take some how many T edges of that? How many vertices? This is like 2K, uh, 2T vertices, but 2T is less than K. And how many edges did you cover? K edges, at least T edges. You are done. Okay. So if the maximal matching is small, then you return both endpoints, no? You have covered all the edges. But done. So if the number of edges that you need to cover is too small compared to the number of vertices, then you just really can do it. Okay? So what achieved after this? So structure of this graph is number of vertices that you're allowed to pick is at most 2t. And the maximum degree of this graph is how much? At most t. Okay. What does pigeonhole principle tells us? If there are k vertices that covers at least t edges, then there's a vertex of degree how much in that? There must exist a vertex of degree at least t by k, by pigeonhole principle. OK, then I define this set H, whose vertex, what is the property of this vertex? These are those vertices whose degree is at least t over k. And I claim to you, if the number of high degree vertices is too large, you are done. You know why? If a graph has maximum degree t, this graph is what colorable if it is not k4? Do you know Brooks theorem? 
Anybody knows Brooks theorem? It's T colorable. What is the meaning of T colorable? Okay. So if you have T colorable, okay, so let me draw here. So basically, okay, it's a T colorable graph. And how many vertex we have high degree has? At least TK. So there is some color class whose size is at least more than K. I'm telling you, go. You will decide, pick up some K elements from here. Any K elements. Does that job do the job for you? Every guy covers at least TK, T divided by K. There is no edges among themselves. So T divided by K times K is K. You are done. So if the number of vertices whose degree is more than T by K, you're great. You're still done in poly time. Otherwise, what is the case? Number of high degree vertices is bounded by TK, right? And what do you know? At least one of those vertex must go into our solution, right? Because if you don't pick any of them, you can't have K vertices, then the hedge it is. G, K, T is a yes instance, if and only if, or of, G minus V, K minus 1, T minus degree V is a yes instance. So I say, OK, let me try this vertex into my solution. If I decide to pick this vertex into my solution, I can delete it, decrease my parameter by 1, and look for T minus degree of V. Right? OK. So what is the depth? Each time, I'm picking at least one vertex in my solution. What is the depth of this tree? K. And what is the branching factor? You are doing recursion in how many ways? Two T ways. Right? So the total number of nodes in the search tree is upper bounded by 2t to the power k, and you're spending some polynomial amount of time at each node, which means this is bounded by less than or equal to 2t to the power of big O of 1, n to the power of big O of 1, and you are done. Is it OK? We're done. So the algorithm was very simple. We first made the graph small degree, p, and then said, hey, some high degree vertex must go into my solution. OK, fine. So I look at all these high degree. Too many, but if there are too many, then I can find greedily k of them. How? The trivial algorithm would have been pick a vertex. Pick a vertex into your solution. Now you cannot pick any of its neighbor. You deal, you, how many do you lose? t plus 1. Pick another vertex, which is not. Again, you lose t plus 1. Even this greedy would have given you this k size solution. But But the number of high degree vertical, like some t plus 1 times k. Who cares? Right? And once this is small, I say one of them must go into the solution. So let me try one by one all of them and see which search tree leads to me for the solution. And then that's it. Done. Right? So now what have we been able to achieve? We are able to achieve that in FPT time, we are either able to find you k vertices. Either say that k vertices do not cover t edges, or I will give you a k vertices which will cover at least b into t number of edges, and you are happy. Okay, So similar idea also works with plus 1, but that requires a bit more hard work, so I will not do that for you. Okay, So I think I have kept up my promise, and I have been 1.5 times fast. So in fact, this is the last remark. If we're just talking about t, you can actually design an algorithm with running time 2 to the power big O of t using color coding and dynamic programming, which I will not teach. Okay, so this was a detour of approximation, parameterized algorithm, and some greedy. So greedy is good when it is compared with some exact algorithm. Otherwise, if greedy is only good for approximation, greedy is not good for exact algorithm. Okay, thank you. So until you have a question, I'm done. Factor two approximation is there in poly time. So that you want to take for partial vertex with the factor two approximation. It's slightly non-trivial, but like it's possible to do. Like using some uh, primal dual.
n meaning oh for some problem independent set has some n by 